Welcome back to the Garden Hutch. Today we're going to discuss week 48 of 2022. Let's get going. Well, week 48 started off rainy. It was all right in the middle of the week, a little chilly, and then it ended with some rain. In fact, as we're doing this video, we're getting just a bit of a rain now. So um, after the summer we had, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because I am definitely not. Um, heading into week 49, though, I just wanted to point this out. Here in the southeast, we're going to get a lot of rain. So it's a good idea if you can to try to utilize that if you use rain buckets or any of that kind of stuff. Um, also, if you can, if you plan on adding any sort of amendments to your soil um, as far as like compost and that sort of stuff, it's a good time to go ahead and get it in there so that the rain can sort of uh, mix the nutrients through there and it helps it sort of cool off a little bit before the springtime comes. So you don't have to worry about burning um, your crops or any of that kind of stuff. So this week uh, in our vlog, we're just going to kind of go over what happened during week 48, look ahead a little bit. But before we get going, I just want to say, if you have not, do us a solid, hit that sub button. It goes a long way in helping us reach our goals. If you enjoy this content, hit that little thumbs up button. Just kind of helps us get recommended to new folks. All right, let's get going. Well, December's a bit of a slow month in the garden. Uh, even here in zone 7B, you know, it's you kind of have this winter uh, solstice that's coming through. So right now the days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter and the end of the month they start getting a little bit longer, but it's not really a great time to start growing anything. Um, you know, the last couple months would have been a good time to get things in the ground. Right now is sort of a time for resting. Um, it's a really good time to let your gardens just sort of rest, not bother them a whole lot, you know, let the microbes and stuff get caught up uh, and get ready for what's fixing to come, you know. Um, so usually we do a December in your garden video. I'm just going to kind of tie it in here to the first week of December. Um, and the reason for that is, again, there's just not a whole lot to do. So a few things that you can get done in December, though, if you have ornamentals in your garden spaces and they've already died back, you can go ahead and start trimming them. Um, here on the homestead, we love our chickens, we get eggs, we eat them every day. If that's something that you're looking to add to your garden area or to your homestead, now is a perfect time to start looking into building the coop and researching your chickens that you're going to want. In fact, building materials have started going down since their peak there in the pandemic time. A lot of people have surpluses and things, so you can get some really good deals. So anyway, I just want, kind of wanted to throw that out there. Um, another thing that we like to do here um, at the homestead in December is put on the last layer of mulch that we're going to do for the year. Again, as I mentioned earlier, it just allows it to sort of cool off and blend well with the existing soil, add microbes to what came before it and that sort of thing. All right. So with all of that out of the way, the other thing I wanted to talk about is we do have a few things actually growing here in December um, after I went on the whole tirade and stuff of, uh, you know, things not growing. So let's go take a look at what we're actually eating out of our gardens. We added a bit of compost to our strawberries and these guys are looking pretty good. Next year, I'll have to thin this out. I didn't realize they were gonna take off so good. Um, another thing that we'll do here mid-December, um, and it's really good for folks in our area if you haven't yet, is we'll go through areas like this um, after we add whatever compost we need to to finish the year off, and we'll cover this in straw. That way in the spring, um, as the strawberries grow, they'll come right up through that kind of stuff. So um, actually, you can kind of see we added that um, potting soil that we got on sale in here just to add a little bit of filler. Uh, and it had covered all the strawberries off and even with the cold weather you can see that um, the strawberries have sort of worked their way through the soil but let's look at what we're actually able to eat right now these uh, we planted a bunch of sweet onions in here we planted them last year in the spring and they simply didn't get the size that we wanted so we're going to try them in the fall but these started coming up about a week and a half ago uh, maybe two weeks now but we went through and I made a salad the other day and I just pulled one because we overplanted as we tend to do. And they are absolutely delicious. So believe it or not, 
we actually have these green onions that we're eating right now. All right, so as we're looking in here, it just uh, made me think, another thing that's good to do here in the month of December, if you've planned on it already, it's a great time to go ahead and pre-order your seeds. During the pandemic, a lot more people were home gardening and such, and so seeds were hard to get your hands on. I don't think that's gonna be the case this year, but you never know. Um, we always like to be proactive. We have our gardens pretty much planned right now, and actually that's something we'll go over in our first videos of January. Um, I'm already starting to get that garden itch. I feel like I haven't been able to do much out here lately, so you can see how well these carrots are coming along. I've had a lot of wind along with this rain, so they're kind of beaten up a little bit, but overall, they are looking pretty good. Uh, what we'll do, as you can see, the wind blew a lot of these shade leaves into the le or into the carrots. What I'll do is just go through and remove them from the top so the carrots have room to stand up, but I'll leave them in the center of the rows, and that just helps it uh, prevent erosion from the wind, um, and it helps keep a lot of the rain in. Although that's not an issue right now, but it could be, you know, it's Arkansas, who knows? Um, and right now, we showed this before, but our turnips got bit pretty good uh, by that three or four days that we had that were in the low 20s. Uh, but they're starting to bounce back a little bit. We're actually having quite a few turnips in our beds, and we're going to let those get to just about baseball size or so. Um, and then we'll pull those out and eat them. I can't wait. We, we, Leslie and I both really, really love turnips. This is the star of the show so far this winter, though, this butter crunch lettuce. We're getting it from here, there, and that row down there. I'm going to show you the outsides of these, right, when it gets... I'll pull that off so you can see. See what happens here? The outsides of them whenever they freeze. But it still has uh, quite a bit or a nice uh, texture to it. So this one over here, you can see, kind of does the same. So what I do is, you know, once a week or so, I'll come out and I'll pull the stuff that's gotten a little waterlogged, frozen on the ends of it, so it doesn't rot the rest of the plant. But we're eating, we're still eating salad. So I guess if you subtract that one three week period, they're right at the end of the summer heading into the fall. We have been able to eat lettuce from our garden every day uh, since last April. So that's a pretty good thing. So that's one of the things we're trying to uh, push on our channel is we're learning how to do this ourselves to make sure we don't have gaps. And as we're doing that, hopefully we're teaching other folks how to do the same thing. Um, you know, a lot of the first years will be what not to do. But as we go along, it'll be a lot more of the what uh, that you can do. I did want to show these as well. You can see we didn't pull them. And they are absolutely getting new leaves on them now that the weather, we haven't had hardly any freezes since then it's been right I don't know maybe 30 or so so we'll get a bit of a frost but just as we anticipated um, instead of pulling them you can see they're getting new leaves on them so what I'm gonna try to do is see if that will actually swell the beets and make them a little bigger and if so this is just something that we'll continue to do um, this week there's a day I can't remember what day it is but the upcoming week there's a day where we're not supposed to have any sort of weather so what I'm gonna do at that point is I'm just gonna come out and take off all of the leaves that are no longer beneficial to them only on the ones that have new leaves coming up though and I'll just take those and I'll just chunk them right in the bed and let them rot there then um, once these are done with the fall garden and winter garden I'll just turn them all into the bed and that'll just add nutrients to it as we go along but I anticipate being able to eat beet greens again relatively soon, so that's exciting. Well, we'll wrap up this week's vlog here in the pallet garden. Um, I kind of checked this, I just wanted to point out, adding those leaves on there, they are absorbing a mass amount of water right now. So I'm really hoping that that's beneficial leading into uh, this summertime because everybody knows around here, you know, we had that, I think it was like a nine or 10 week drought where it was in the hundreds. And these beds dried out really well to the point where I was a little concerned towards the end of the summer. We started looking into ways to conserve some water, that sort of thing. So I've kind of got a few ideas on our new watering plans, that sort of thing. I'll put those on the channel as the time comes. But at this point, I think I've rambled on long enough. Um, as always, I appreciate everyone sticking it out here till the end. Until next time, I hope you all take care of yourselves.
Peace.